Today, I'm sharing a recipe with you that's for a white cranberry mead. It's super easy to do. You can use mostly store-bought ingredients, and I can't wait to show it to you. So let's get started. So today's recipe is very simple. It's a white cranberry mead. Now, if you've never had white cranberry juice, go try some, it's interesting. It's like cranberries, it's got some, you know, acidic, <laughs> nature, and that's cranberries too. Well, I just learned something in my editing as I'm taking care of this video. White cranberries aren't their own fruit. I'm sure some of you are like, obviously, idiot. They're not their own fruit. White cranberries are cranberries early in the ripe process. This is early harvest. Once they're harvested later, or riper, essentially, they turn red, or once you freeze them, they turn red, or once you cook them, they turn red because of the red pigment in them. So white cranberries are just cranberries early in their harvesting season. I learned that, maybe you knew that. If so, comment below. If you didn't, comment below. Hey, I learned something new, but I had to pop in and tell you my dumb experience of learning a new thing, and I hope you've learned with me. So back to the video and uh, it's similar, maybe a little bit different flavor profile. You can actually find juice at your store, like your local Walmart or grocery store. Now, one thing to know about store-bought juices like that, especially if they're cheap, sometimes they're cut with other things. So this was probably part white cranberry, part apple, or some other juice that was not exactly cranberry or white cranberry. Just something to note. If you have the real fruit, that's awesome. Um, use it. I, I would say go for it. Use two to three pounds per gallon, but we used a strict juice today. So this was, here's our recipe card. The recipe is like obviously mostly juice based. I did use a different kind of honey that's listed than what's listed on the uh, card. The card just says a light honey like orange blossom. I used raspberry blossom honey and that's okay. We're using the Lalvin D47, a commonly used mead yeast. Of course, some yeast nutrient. I'm using all Fermade O and there was no back sweetening or anything post fermentation with this guy, not even oak. I kind of left this one alone because I was curious to see what it tastes like without any oak character, but you could always oak your brew. You might need some other things like more back sweetening sugar, like honey or acid balance or oak. Cranberries are very odd when it comes to pH. Generally, you have to buffer the pH to where the yeast will be comfortable in the fermentation range. So often you have to bring it down with something like uh, a potassium bicarbonate. I think I'm saying that right. Yes, I'm pretty sure I'm right. Fact check myself if I'm wrong. Something like that will help to bring the pH down to where it will actually ferment. So I didn't do anything with that regarding the pH buffering. And this one ended up pretty okay, so maybe don't worry about it. So let's make this brew. You'll notice that I'm making a bigger vessel, more than one gallon here. That's because I made a bigger batch, but I'm showing you a one gallon recipe. Essentially, it's three pounds of honey with your little bit over one gallon of juice. I love these big mouth, uh, wide mouth fermenters that basically allow you to have more room. Specifically, I used a 1.3 gallon fermenter, which was really helpful for this brew because I could go above and then eventually rack into a one gallon. So I started with more than one gallon, but you might have to just go to one gallon specifically. We mixed together juice, honey, D47 yeast. Got that going. Starting gravity was 1.110. So we let that you know, start fermenting after pitching our yeast. We did go ahead and stagger the nutrient with the Fermade O, so I added some at the 24 and 48 hour mark to split it up a little bit. That helped the fermentation go, obviously. We noticed the fermentation slowed down after about uh, three to four weeks. Again, the pH whole thing. I didn't check the pH of this one to see if it was low to where I needed to raise it up, essentially, and uh, that's okay. Ultimately, this worked out well because we went from the starting gravity of 1.110 to the ending gravity after about three to four weeks of 1.020. I noticed it kind of slowed down, came to a halt, no more fermentation, and it sat there for another week or two, which meant fermentation was done. I'm guessing the yeast kind of petered out and said, hey, I can't do any more. Even though they can go up to about 14, 15%, as the Lalvin D47 does, they ended early 
it was probably because of the pH, as I'm noticing. But it worked out in my favor because we had a little sweetness without having to back sweeten. If you wanna make sure this ferments out completely, adjust that pH early on, make sure you give your nutrition throughout the process, and you'll probably end at the 1.000. But you also might want it sweet, so it's okay if it ends a little sweet. We racked it into a new container, and at this point, because I wasn't doing anything else, I wasn't back sweetening, I wasn't oaking, I literally just left it in the carboy for like four months. I didn't do anything. This, this meat at this point is about five months old because it sat for four months in the carboy. I then bottled it, a little bit unclear. I mean, after sitting for a while, it's still a little unclear. That's okay. And here we are. Now, before we do any tastings, I wanna make sure and tell you about the other things you can do. Let's say you wanted to make it sweeter, like it went really dry, very kind of acidic and tart. You wanna make it sweeter. You can either, uh, assuming the yeast are completely done, you could just back sweeten with more honey and the fermentation will be done. If you know the yeast can keep going, then you'll want to stabilize or pasteurize, which is stabilizing with potassium sorbate and metabisulfite or pasteurizing following a heating schedule essentially to kill off the yeast use honey to back sweeten. Let's say you wanted some oak, take your oak chips, cubes, spiral, whatever, throw that into the brew, into the container for however long you want. If you need to adjust acid balance on here, if it's not already tart enough for you, you can use citric or malic or tartaric acid or lemon juice or lime juice. These are balancing uh, things that we do to help you basically make a better tasting brew. So those are things you can do, but I didn't do any of that with this one because it's already pretty tart, it's got the sweetness, and the tannin's decently there. So anyways, that's what we did. Let's go ahead and taste this thing. Let's see what it looks like first, and then we'll taste it. One thing I find really funny is what I just did, unintentionally, there's, like times when you're like, let's see what the brew looks like. And it's in a clear bottle. And you're like, well, I can already tell what it looks like, obviously. So we knew what it looked like. You just poured it into a glass. It does look very good, not very clear. I could have used a clearing agent. I'm not opposed to it, honestly. I just thought after five months of sitting, for, or four months, I guess, of sitting, that it would clear up naturally. It probably would eventually, but it's okay. So, very rich nose. It's got a lot of, I mean, it's got a little acid on the nose, a little tartness. There is some nice honey um, floral, like a um, almost wildflowery floral, which is interesting for what I used. Yeah. I'm ready. Are you ready? Here we go. Definitely tart. This thing at 1020, final gravity. It probably could have used a few more points of gravity to help combat the uh, tartness or the acidity. I mean, it's not tart like it's uh, bad. It's the atypical cranberry tart, which is just natural. That's, that's how they are as a fruit. It is pretty smooth. Not a lot of alcohol burn or presence. We're sitting roughly in the realm of 12-ish percent. So like five months is a decent amount of time to cut off and say like, okay, hopefully there's not a lot of alcohol burn. The thing that I do miss here that would uh, elevate it is tannin. It has some tannin, but it's more juicy. This feels like I'm drinking a pretty sugary juice. It's kind of what's going on here with the honey character, of course. That honey character is presenting, uh, not conflicting, presenting as a bright floral that kind of bumps up with the tart, which is interesting. And there is sweetness from the honey too. So I quite like it. It is different though. It obviously is something you'd have to have a, a bit of a tart tooth, if that's a thing, for if you wanna drink this a lot. I think it's pretty good. Will it get better with time? Absolutely. I think this thing, give it more time, maybe that tartness, acidity will come down. The sweetness will rise up, so we have this kind of balancing act. The tannin won't necessarily get better because we haven't adjusted the tannin. I did use, and I forgot to mention it, I'm sure it's in my card, I did try to adjust tannin early on this, so I used some wine tannin, powdered wine tannin. I'm sure I could have done more with that to help push that forward and give it more body in that regard. So that's on the recipe card that you saw, um, if you noticed it. Overall, a really fun brew, and I highly recommend you try it. 
It's so stinking easy. That's what I love about this. The fact that it did not go dry actually worked in my favor. I don't mind back sweetening and using, um, you know, fermentable sugar and stabilizing or pasteurizing. I don't mind doing that. However, sometimes it's nice when it ends early. Now you want it to end early in a healthy manner. You don't want your yeast to be so unhealthy that they put off fusels, which are off flavors. And then when they put off those fusels, it takes longer for the mead to age and be appropriately good. So it's just something to note there. Anyways, I hope you'll take this idea. You could use the same white cranberry juice idea. You could walk through the store and find another juice. Regardless, juice-based meads are really fun to work with. Make sure you're adjusting your pH. You know what the situation is there. They do make pH little testers if you're interested in that. There's cheap ones you can get. If you're worried about that, check it. Adjust with potassium bicarbonate if you need to raise it to make it more basic. If it's too basic, you need to make it more acidic. Use lemon juice, lime juice. I highly doubt you're gonna have that problem though. So that has been a white cranberry mead. I hope you'll let me know what you think below. Have you done this before? Have you used the real fruit? I don't have experience with the real fruit. So I need some expertise down below. How many pounds of fruit per gallon would you recommend? How would you treat them? So on and so forth. I would love to do a real fruit cranberry mead at some point. It's just pretty dang easy to use the juice, even if it's somewhat cut with some other stuff, which this probably is. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe, we're on the road, I think we're on the road at least still, to 75,000 subscribers in this year, and I look forward to uh, continuing to grow with you as a mead maker, and I hope that you will push me forward to grow even more. Join the Discord if you wanna chat, it's a whole lot easier than the YouTube comments, and I will see you in the future with another video. Cheers.